Welcome back everyone to the Mori Garage. In this episode, I'm gonna be spending the entire time up in the attic. So my AC in the house went out last Friday. It's now Monday. I saw on the thermostat that it was reading 84 and I had it set at 75. I went outside, noticed that the outside unit was working, but there was no air blowing through the vents. So I actually know quite a bit about car AC systems because it's crazy enough that two weeks ago I had to rebuild my girlfriend's AC system. I replaced the compressor, condenser, evaporator, expansion valve. I did everything other than the lines. Um, so I do know quite a bit about it, but this is a larger scale system. So I did call somebody and have somebody come out here and look at it. It is in fact the blower motor and they quoted me $1,200 to fix this. There's no way. There's no way I was going to pay that. So no, being me, I got on Amazon. I found the blower motor for 250 bucks. So I, I ordered it and I'm going to show you how to install it. So I'm up here in the attic. This is the housing that actually holds everything. We're going to be focusing on this side right over here. So to take this side cover off, you're going to have four bolts. I've already started taking them out. So there's one there. You're going to have one on that side. There is one right below this breaker switch right here. And then you've got one right over here. So we'll pull all four of those bolts out and this side panel will just pull straight out. So when you pull the panel off, this is what you're going to see. This is all of your wiring over here. This is the fan and there's the blower motor in there. That's the one I'm going to be replacing. There's these breakers down here. So because I don't want to get electrocuted, I'm going to go ahead and switch these to off. That way nothing's running and I know that I won't get shocked. Just as a backup, I did go get some rubber gloves because there is quite a bit of voltage running through this thing. So I've got my breakers flipped off. So I'm gonna focus on this blower motor now. The first thing that I'm gonna do is look at this wiring. And for anybody else that's trying to do this, the best suggestion that I have is to you do exactly what I'm doing right now. Get your phone, take a video, go all around this wiring. That way when it's time to hook it back up, you know exactly where every piece goes. There's not a lot going on here. It looks like there's just two pieces up top, two wires up top, and then a harness at the bottom. So I shouldn't have to do too much, but it'll be nice to reference back to this if I need it. Now that I have a good video of all my wiring and I know where it all goes, I'm gonna go ahead and remove this bolt and remove this ground wire. Now that I have my ground wire removed, I'm gonna go ahead and cut this zip tie right here so I can free these wires from this mounting bracket. After you remove the zip tie, all of your wires should just pull directly out. Just like that. Now that I've got all of my wires disconnected, I have one more bolt right here that's holding this fan housing in. I thought that that was gonna be the only bolt that I was gonna have to remove because that's the one that's holding the housing and I thought it would pull straight out. But I do have to remove this bolt down here at the bottom and then this one up here at the top because that's actually what's holding this little mounting bracket in place. After you remove those two bolts that I just showed you, this piece will fall straight off. And you can see I've already removed the housing, but it just fits inside of this little slot here and this little slot up top. So once you remove this bracket, it literally slides straight out. Here is the fan assembly removed. So I'm gonna go ahead and start removing these motor mount bolts. There's three of them all the way around. And then we can pull this motor out of there. I took all three bolts out of the motor mounts. I flipped the entire assembly over. And so now I loosened up this bolt right here with a nine millimeter wrench. You see a lot of guys doing it with crescent wrenches. That's fine too and I couldn't get it to move anywhere. So you can see how rusted this is. So what I ended up doing was taking some of my PB blaster and just shooting it down in there to kind of help penetrate that. And then I'm gonna take some sandpaper and scrape some of that rust off of there and it'll make this thing a little bit easier to get out. I got the blower motor out. It was actually a lot more difficult than what I was hoping it was going to be, but this was the hardest part of doing this. So what I ended up having to do, as you can see on there, I sprayed a lot of the PB Blaster. You can see how rusted it is right there in the center, and you can see how rusted it is right there at the edges because those are the exposed parts. 
This right here was what was hanging me up. I got all this sanded down. I just kept having to spray the PB Blaster to get down there and try to penetrate this. But what I ended up doing is I would spray a little bit and then I actually would use my hammer and one of my socket extensions. And what I did is just place this right on top of there. It'll be coming through this hole. So I just place this right on top and then use my hammer to beat on the top of that. You actually do have to hit it pretty hard and it takes a while, um, but I slowly but surely knocked it out. How I had to do it though, what I did is I actually had some hardwood installed a couple of years ago and these are the extra planks that I had. So I stacked them up enough to where I could get this. So this side obviously sat underneath this side, that side sat underneath this side, and then the blower motor would be right in the center and then I would just hammer on the center of this and then eventually this dropped out. But I got it out and we'll go ahead and start getting this new one back in. So I brought the motor down into the garage because it was so hot in the attic, but I wanted to show you this. This is how you're gonna order your new motor. So if you go up there, all you have to do is just look at the sticker on top. So we know that the brand is Gentech. This is gonna be the model, the X13. All of those numbers are important. So the X13, you wanna make sure you get the exact same horsepower rating. So this is a half horsepower, and then it's gonna be a 230 volt. So here's the new motor. I got it off of Amazon. You can see right here, it is the X13 replacement motor. It is made by Gentech, and it is this Evergreen series. I don't know if that's a new model that they've come out with or something, but it looks identical. You can see here, it's a half horsepower. 208 to 230 volts, so we're good. So this should be a direct replacement. Here is the old motor and here is the new one. So the first thing that I'm gonna have to do is take this clamp that holds the motor mounts in place and move it to the new one. But before I do that, I'm gonna measure from here to the bottom and also here to the top. I don't know that it's gonna make a difference, but I wanna make sure that this is in the exact same place on the new one as it was on the old one. So you can see right here, it measures between about an inch and five eighths and an inch and three quarters. Depending on where you measure all the way around, it actually does drop down to an inch and five eighths and an inch and three quarters in different places. So I know that I just need to be between an inch and five eighths and an inch and three quarters and I'll be good. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this bolt off right here. We'll slide this assembly down and we'll put it on the new one. Motor mounts are on the new motor so we can go drop it in the fan assembly. Now that the motor mounts are on the new motor, we can take the shaft and put it through the wheel assembly there, and I'm gonna go ahead and tighten down my motor mounts. After you've got the new motor in and lined up and the motor mounts on, turn it on its side, and we wanna line this wheel up so that it spins freely and it's not touching any of the sides. Just spin it, make sure it's not touching anything. You can look at both sides, make sure it's even, and you're good to go. Now that I have the fan centered and it's not touching anything, I'm gonna go ahead and reinstall the set screw for the shaft of the motor. After the set screw's tightened, I'm gonna go ahead and remove this sticker and this pad for my wiring connections, and I'm gonna slide the blower assembly back in exactly how I took it out. Now that the blower assembly is back in place, I'm gonna go ahead and reinstall this bracing. So we've got the two bolts that actually hold the bracing to this up top and down bottom. And then we've got the two bolts that connect it to the blower assembly here and here. So I have the top bolt for the bracket in, I have the bottom bolt for the bracket in, I have the bottom bolt that's going to the fan assembly. So remember that this bolt is actually the ground. So I'm gonna go ahead and reinstall that and then we'll wire this thing up. I'm gonna go ahead and reconnect my wiring. I took my video beforehand so I know exactly where everything goes. This harness is gonna go into the bottom and then my blue wire is going to go into my number two port on top. And then my white wire is going to be going into my number four port on top. My ground is connected. All of my wires are connected back. So I'm going to go ahead and flip my breakers on and we can test this thing out. And there it is, fixed and running. Saved myself almost a thousand dollars. Now that I've tested it and made sure it works, I'm gonna go ahead and reinstall the cover on the outside, and it's done.